to week four. So this week in class, we started to talk more about the mouth, the throat, the tongue, as well as uh, with hearing, so ears. So we did cream letters 8, 9, 10, and 12. So those are the things that we're going to add on to the component of what we've learned so far. So the things that you'll be checked off on, you could draw cranial nerve 8. If you draw cranial nerve 8, you will be doing the whisper test to test for hearing, as well as the Romberg test for balance and equilibrium, both cranial nerve 8. So I will go ahead and do that one first. So the whisper test, I would actually need to be standing about arm's length behind my patient, and I will have them occlude one ear. I will whisper two words. And then my patient would say which two words that I said. Then I would need to go to the other side, and I would stand an arm's length behind, and I would whisper two different words, because I don't want to use the same words, otherwise my patient would easily guess. And I would have them occlude the opposite ear, and have them tell me the words that I whispered. If whispered sounds are heard bilaterally, then the sensory component of cranial nerve 8 is intact. For the Romberg test, balance equilibrium, I can't have my patient do it since he uh, is a mannequin. Uh, so for the Romberg test, you will ask your patient to stand up, feet shoulder width apart, so not too wide, shoulder width, sort of narrow, have them close their eyes. And what you're going to watch for is you're going to see, is your patient able to stay balanced and upright with their eyes closed? You want to watch for any swaying. You want to make sure that they don't spread their legs out wider, so widen their base of stance to stay upright. And you also want to make sure they don't hit the floor. So you may want to put your arms around your patient just to kind of have them there in case the patient does lose balance. If they do not sway, if they do not lose balance, then we say Romberg is negative and cranial nerve 8 is intact. If you draw the cards for cranial nerves 9 and 10, 9 and 10 are swallow and gag reflexes. So you will need a tongue blade and you will also need a pin light. So what you'll want to do is you will be looking in your mouth. I'm going to go ahead and add on, this is not what you have to do for your check off, but just to demonstrate the mouth assessment. When I'm looking at the mouth, you would want to note the lips are the pink, moist, and intact. Shine a pin light inside the mouth is the tongue pink, moist, and intact with a little bit of roughness on the dorsal side and then smooth, glossy on the ventral side, on the bottom side. I would want to look at the teeth. They appear to be china white. Looking at the buccal mucosa on the inside of the cheek, also pink, moist, and intact. Looking up at the hard and soft palate, they are pink, moist, and intact. The hard palate has a little bit of a gray undertone because it's hard and has bone underneath. And the soft palate has a little bit of a yellow undertone because that subcutaneous fat tissue underneath. Then I'm going to go look behind and I'm looking at that posterior pharyngeal wall. So I know that there's no redness or exudate. So this is where I'm going to get into now my 9 and 10. I'm also looking to see if there's no pooling of saliva in the back of the throat. Also, the patient has no drooling. So they appear to be swallowing their own saliva. I could also ask if they're having issues with swallowing, or could ask, could you go ahead and swallow me? And observe the patient swallow. Then I will take my tongue blade and have the patient say, ah. And when they say, ah, I'm watching for the uvula to rise with formation. If the uvula rises with formation, it rises midline, then cranial nerves, and the, they are not having any issues with swallowing, then cranial nerves 9 and 10 are intact. The next one is cranial nerve 12. Cranial nerve 12 is movement of the tongue, that hypoglossal nerve. So for movement of the tongue, you could either ask your patient to stick out the tongue, move it side to side, stick it up and down, and move their tongue in all those directions. Also, when they stick out their tongue midline, you want to make sure that it does so midline. There's no tremors or deviations. Another thing that you could do is you could ask your patient, could you please repeat the words light, tight, dynamite? If your patient could say light, tight, dynamite, their tongue can move in all of the directions that we need it to, and cranial nerve 12 is intact. So I'm going to add in, because we talked about ears and nose this week, I'm going to go ahead and just add in, since I already showed you the mouth, uh, if you have extra time, you can practice the mouth assessment. You can also practice the nose and ears assessment from your head to chest check off. So this is not for your mini return demonstration for the week. This is if you're wanting to add on and start building to your head to chest. So for the ears, I'm looking at the external ear. I don't see any redness, swelling, or exudate. I'm going to look behind the ear. I don't see any skin breakdown, and I don't see any redness, swelling, or exudate. Looking down the external auditory canal, I don't see any cerumen or any redness, swelling, or exudate. I'm going to press in the tragus and ask the patient if they have any tenderness. The patient 
denies me a trade as tenderness. I would do the same thing for the other side. Looking at the external here, no redness swelling or exudate. Looking down the external auditory hiatus, I don't see any cerumen impaction. I also don't see any redness swelling or exudate. I'm going to look behind me here. I don't see any skin breakdown. I'm going to palpate the tragus. Any tenderness? Patient denies tragus tenderness. Then I can move on to the nose. So for the nose, I'm going to look at the external structures. The nose appears to be midline. It is in proportion to the rest of the facial features. Then I can look up the nose. Looking up the nose, I don't see a deviated septum. The nasal mucosa appears to be pink, moist, and intact. I don't see any drainage. I don't see any redness, swelling, or exudate. Next, I'm going to ask the patient to occlude one nair and have them breathe in. Then I can include the other nair, have them breathe in. I could, patient had reports no issues with inhalation, so nostrils or nares are painted bilaterally. Last week we covered the eyes, but I don't believe that I included the eye assessment. So what it would look like if you were doing the eye assessment from the head to chest is you would first be looking at the eyes, looking at symmetry. So the eyes appear symmetric. Are the palpebral fissures even and symmetric? So the eyes are symmetric, palpebral fissures are even and symmetric. Also the outer canvas of the eye lines up with the top of the ear, and the ears appear to be even and symmetric. The eyebrows are even and symmetric. The eyebrows and eyelashes are present and they are free of any infestations. Eyelashes grow up and away and down and away. I am looking at the sclera. The sclera is china white. I'm going to pull down and have the patient look up. Looking at the conjunctiva, the conjunctiva has pink undertones and it is moist and intact. And then you would go into your eye assessment with Perla and any of the cranial nerves that you wanted to. And that catches us up for all the things that you should know so far. I encourage you to go back to weeks two and weeks three, what you've already learned, and be adding on and practicing everything you know so far for the head to chest. We're almost done.